In today's episode, either be fired or accept a massive pay cut. Okay, I'll take the firing. You're working 20 minutes more every day? Unacceptable. I'm sorry, but employees can't eat. So let's get started. Either be fired or accept a massive pay cut. Okay, I'll take the firing. I worked for company for 14 years. I loved working there for 12 of those years. There were two main parts to the job. The first part was the sales side of things. This was away from the office, in the customer's location. This involved quite a bit of driving, and on a couple of occasions flying abroad, to work face to face with the customers to deliver a high quality product. We weren't the cheapest, but we were the superior product. And I was the best employee when it came to delivering the product. I consistently got rave reviews from customers for my personal style when it came to delivering the product and executing the customer's vision. I got a huge amount of repeat business, and I got a lot of new business through word of mouth with customers recommending the company based on their experiences with me. The second part was the office side. This was my weaker side. I hated cold calling potential customers with numbers I found in the phone book. When it came to answering the phone and speaking to potential customers who initiated contact with us I was fine. But I wasn't great at making the calls. This was my only real not great part of my job. So, in the office I wasn't asked to make any calls. Instead I prepared product. Design new product. Train new staff members, ended up being one of the biggest parts of my job. I was also the problem solver, helping out whenever and wherever. Filling in for sick employees whenever I could. I liked the owner, and I liked the manager. I liked all the staff who were around me. All in all it was a great job that I was really good at and took pride in. The company had been doing so well that the owner had slowly expanded over the 12 years since I started working for company. I had joined about three months after he started, so I'd been a part of this expansion. I worked out of my nearest office, but often traveled to other areas to train their staff. I was loaned out as it were to other companies to help train their staff. At one point I was a guest lecturer at a university teaching medical students how to deliver complicated explanations to people who don't have the base knowledge that you yourself do. After 12 years I was on a decent salary. Not massive, but I was happy. Then the owner decided to sell off part of the company. He was selling the area where my local office was. He told me he would love for me to remain as his employee, but I would need to work from a different office. This was either require me to move or to quadruple, at a minimum, my daily commute. The other option was to remain working from my current office, but with a new boss. I chose the second option. Before the new owner bought the company she worked alongside the staff for a couple of weeks to see how we operated. This was before any of us knew she was about to buy the company. As far as we knew she was just another employee, and she was shadowing us to learn. She came with me on assignments in the field and saw my abilities. When the sale was announced and we were informed that she was the new owner, everyone was very surprised. She made some sweeping staffing changes. The manager left to start her own business, since the new owner was also going to be the manager. A lot of staff were let go. The secretary, myself and a couple of newer hires were kept on. The new hires were on the lowest wages, not salaries. Anyone who had got to a decent level was let go. Since almost everyone was on a zero-hours contract, she was able to do this. Whilst technically it was a new company for the customers it was the same old business. The company still had the same trading name. The only real difference was that there was a new owner and the registered business name was now different. As far as the customers were concerned nothing had changed. My job for the first few months after the sale was to train up the remaining staff to replace the more experienced staff members who had been let go. I recommended a couple of new hires who I had experience working with in the past. I was open and honest with the owner, and let her know that one of them was a close friend and one of them was my girlfriend. 
Both were more than qualified for the work and both were happy to join. My friend had recently come back to the country after a year of traveling, whilst my girlfriend could only work during school holidays, worked in a school. The owner gave them both interviews then hired them, since we needed the staff. Over the next two years business started to fall. The reason was simple, the new owner decided to try and maximize profits by increasing prices whilst decreasing the quality of the product. For new customers this wasn't noticeable. They just thought we were expensive, and the product wasn't the best. But for old customers who had been with us for 10 plus years, they immediately noticed. They were being charged more, and were receiving less slash worse quality. So the owner doubled down and increased prices again. 95% of our old customers left us. New customers almost never became repeat customers. Complaints skyrocketed. Whilst all this was going on our staff turnover rate was ridiculous. People left after a few months when they realized that the minimum wage they were being paid wasn't worth it. Under the old owner the average hourly wage for new employees was around 2.5x the minimum wage. This made people care about their jobs and want to keep them. My girlfriend quit. My friend remained but was looking for something new. Then I got a phone call. The owner needed me to come to the office. This was unexpected. I had just finished working on location with a customer. My next customer was in two and a half hours. It was a half hour drive away. The office was about an hour and 10 minutes away from both locations. If I drove back to the office I would have about 5 minutes in the office before leaving. My mileage was paid above my regular salary, so I was saving the company money by doing this. Also, parking was a nightmare around the second location, so I intended to get there as early as possible to find parking, then read a book. The manager didn't care. She needed me to return to the office. So I did. I arrived back to be handed a letter by the owner. It was informing me of a disciplinary meeting to take place in a couple of days' time. I could bring a witness along if I so desired. This knocked me for six. I was the best employee. I read through her list of complaints about my performance and started working on my defense. At the meeting I declined to have a witness. Instead I decided to record the audio of the entire meeting on my phone without informing her. Where I live this is legal, and I didn't need consent. The boss witness was her friend who she had met at yoga and hired for an office role, firing the secretary who had been there long before the takeover. Every point she raised I could counter. They ranged from the week. You were unavailable to work for a week in August. I booked a week's holiday so I could attend my cousin's wedding on the other side of the country and turn it into a holiday. To the pathetic. You were late for work on the 12th of May. Is that the day my car broke down and I called the office to let you know? I don't know. I do. Here's the receipt from the garage dated May 12th. To the downright lies. This one I can't write as a quote. Basically, she accused me of gross misconduct for breaking health and safety laws in the way I was delivering a product for a customer. I hadn't broken health and safety laws. I knew exactly what I was doing since, as I've mentioned already, I had been doing this for 14 years at this point. She had witnessed me do this on multiple occasions and had never mentioned it before. Because it wasn't an issue. She even had me train staff in this specific delivery method. Because it wasn't an issue. She finished her list by telling me that she doesn't want to lose me, but she can't justify keeping such a poor employee at my current salary. I had two choices, I could either sign a zero hours contract and work for minimum wage, or she could fire me with two weeks notice. I countered that she would have to give me 12 weeks notice, since my contract guaranteed me one week's notice for every year of employment, up to a maximum of 12. She argued that I had only been her employee for two years, since before then I worked for the previous owner. I informed her that with how the business takeover had run, it counts as continuous employment. I quoted the exact law and code that backed me up. 
She asked for a 30-minute break in the meeting to let me think about her offer. She went to call her lawyer. When she came back she informed me that since she was firing me for gross misconduct, she didn't have to give me any notice at all. If I wanted to remain and move to the zero hours contract, I could do that today. But if I didn't then she would have to fire me. But because she was nice she would give me the two weeks notice. I asked for a couple of hours to go home and think about this. She allowed this. I knew the reason she wanted me to remain for at least the two weeks was because one of our few remaining bigger customers were set to have a product delivery from me in that time. They would only work with me. The owner had tried sending other staff in my place on several occasions, and each time there had been problems. It wasn't the staff's fault. It was just a very difficult delivery for a very specific customer which needed to be perfect. As a result this customer would only deal with me. I called the office and spoke to the owner. I declined the offer of a zero hours contract and said I would be leaving. She then said she was giving me my two weeks notice. I declined her offer of two weeks notice. I informed her that if I was being fired for gross misconduct then surely I cannot be relied upon to safely deliver the product. Therefore it would be best for everyone involved if I didn't return to work. She panicked and said that she needed me for those two weeks. I feigned ignorance and let her know that I was just thinking about what's best for the company. After all, you can't have unsafe staff delivering your product to your customers. However, if she wanted to rethink the gross misconduct accusation then I would work my 12 weeks notice. They were her options. Zero weeks or 12. She chose 12. For those 12 weeks I worked the same way I had for 14 years. I didn't coast. I didn't slack. I didn't badmouth the company on my way out. I continued to train new staff. I continued to deliver the product in my own, personal, exceptional way. I also got in touch with a lawyer who was a specialist in employment law. For those 12 weeks the owner barely spoke to me. She resented the fact that I knew my legal rights and didn't just believe her lies. She hated the fact that I could defend myself. She was petty. She accidentally dropped my mug in the kitchen, breaking it. Most petty of all, she paid for every member of staff in the office to have a spa day. Except me. I was asked to work my day off to answer the phones whilst everyone else was being pampered. Nobody knew I hadn't been invited until they arrived at the spa and I wasn't there. Here's the thing, I'm a big fat bearded guy. I have no interest in a spa day. If she had offered it to me, I would have thanked her and declined the kind offer. But by pointedly excluding me she was making herself look terrible. For the last two weeks I was training up my friend to basically take over from me. At the end of the 12 weeks my final day came around. The owner had nothing planned. Not so much as a card after 14 years, two for her. The office assistant manager who had become a friend had got me some presents, but had to give them to me once the boss was gone, for fear of reprisals. The day after my final day two things happened. The first was my friend who I had been training up to replace me quit. He was on a zero hours contract so required no notice. He was unhappy with her treatment of me, and was unhappy that she expected him to do my, previously salaried, job for minimum wage. He hadn't informed me of his plans to leave, and I only learned of it when he knocked on my door in the middle of the day when he should have been at work to let me know. The second was the owner received a letter informing her that I was bringing legal proceedings against her for constructive dismissal unfair dismissal. I had arranged this with my lawyer to be delivered the day after my final day. According to the office assistant, she went pale and started crying before leaving the office to call her lawyer. She refuted my claims for constructive unfair dismissal. Said it was gross misconduct. Tried to come up with some more reasons for firing me. But the truth was that the company was making less money because of her business practices, and I was the highest and only salary. I had evidence that I was a great employee. I had evidence that she asked me to move to a zero-hours contract. She initially tried to deny this, 
since the gross misconduct fabrication makes no sense if she wanted me to stay. But once my lawyer provided hers with a transcript of the entire meeting along with a copy of the recording, she knew she was fucked. Still, she let the case drag on for over a year. I think she hoped that the legal fees would lead to me dropping the case. Little did she know my lawyer was working on a no-win no-fee basis, whilst hers wasn't. She ended up settling out of court. The Aftermath The office assistant who had become a friend quit a couple of months after I left. She hated how I was treated and didn't feel feel safe working for such an untrustworthy boss. Several former customers contacted me personally to inquire why I was no longer with the company. Apparently the owner was telling them that I just quit. I informed them that I had been fired for cost-cutting reasons. They moved their business elsewhere. Several offered me jobs. One went so far as to offer me a part-time job and to pay for me to attend college to earn a degree required for them to hire me full-time. This was a lovely offer, but they were one of the customers who were a bit too far away to commute, and I wasn't ready to move. In the end I found a new job in a different industry where a lot of my skills transferred over. Currently earning more than I was, working less hours and for better owners. The business is floundering. COVID left the new owner desperate for cash. She cancelled orders but refused to refund customers' money, citing an act of God clause in the contracts. The business Facebook and Google reviews have tanked. Most staff left. The business is still afloat, but barely. You're working 20 minutes more every day? Unacceptable. In the early 2000s I was living in the commuter belt and working in central London. For those not familiar, London only has one train line running through it from north to south, OK pedants, there is the hashtag crossless perp line coming, but it's not here yet, and this was 2000 something, the rest of the lines terminate at somewhere on the circle line of the underground, roughly. For your average commuter that means your local train will go to between 1 and 4 stations, and so you'll favor jobs your side of the city to save getting a bus or tube, but for many it involves one or two of them too. For me I only had one destination from my local station, which was a tiny, slow trains only one. And it wasn't the station right across the road from my office. To get there I would have to make a change. This added to the journey time just enough that I was 5 minutes late to work every day. However, I've lied to you. There was one and only one train a day that went to the station I wanted, but it left an hour earlier, and got me in an hour and 20 minutes earlier. There was also a single train back in the evening 30 minutes after I clocked off. So my daily routine was to get the train with a change in the morning, arriving 5 minutes late, and in the evening I'd work 25 minutes extra and get the direct train home. With the station being so close I was fine to leave it that close to the wire. I usually got a seat even cutting it so fine so all was good, for about 18 months. For some reason I do not understand, maybe it was my fighting with the guy who kept assigning me work even though he wasn't my boss, my actual boss relayed that his boss, the head of IT, was unhappy with me constantly being late. I was young. I was naive. I thought they'd understand that I was working a net plus 20 minutes every day. My boss was actually very cool and didn't want to be dealing with this, but his boss was making a stink, so he explained to his boss and the reply came back that I must be in on time, because those are your contracted hours. I was young and naive, but that doesn't mean I wasn't a pedantic little shit. I proceeded to get the early train, losing an hour's sleep each morning, and arrive at the office 1h and 20 minutes early, took my shoes off, put them up on my desk, set an alarm and did my best to claw back that lost sleep. As people trickled into the office I refused to work or even answer a phone until I was within my contracted hours. Come clocking off time I would pack up and leave to go stand on the platform for nearly 25 minutes, staring off into the distance, thinking about all the work they are losing from me. This lasted about a week before I was told I can't sleep at my desk. So I found the smallest break room that had a sofa and made that my nap spot. It wasn't comfortable, but I was pissed at how strict they were being. Of course I carried on going home when my contracted hours were up. 
A few weeks later my chance came. The shit had hit the fan, and they needed me to work late. As I said before, my immediate boss was cool and I had a I know you know what I'm really saying when I say this conversation with him about how this was outside my contracted hours, but I understand that there is give and take and that when it's needed or doesn't cause an issue. Give and take, right? After that evening I started showing up 5 minutes late again, and nothing was said about it again. I also started staying right up until my train was due, sometimes. I'm sorry, but employees can't eat. I used to work at a restaurant, it was actually two separate joints that shared a kitchen, that was often very slow during the week. I was pretty friendly with most of the bartenders, cooks, other servers, etc. except the manager and the assistant manager. The manager had been there for about a thousand years and was a cantankerous old guy that hated everyone and mumbled to himself a lot. He would often brag that he drove home half asleep at 4 a.m., and would jolt himself awake using the rumble strips when his car crossed into the shoulder. The assistant manager, like many assistant managers, was mean and bitter because he didn't have enough power to call the shots as the manager, but had enough power to order the rank and file around and generally make life miserable. Our story begins one Tuesday evening. It was a slow night in my half, but the other place had live music and a decent crowd, so I had been hustling and helping out the folks on the other side while waiting maybe two or three tables all night on my end. It's about 9.30 and the kitchen closes at 10 so things are winding down. I'm in the kitchen talking with the cooks and the assistant manager and I'm standing by the expo table where there's a plastic bin filled with ice and then small buckets for toppings things like tomatoes, lettuce, onions, etc. Since I've been there since about 3.30 and haven't had anything to eat, I take a pickle spear from the bucket and bring it to my mouth to eat it. Let me stress at this point that this happened all the time and literally everyone did it, including the assistant manager. But the pickle never reaches my mouth, he slaps my hand and I drop it. I'm kind of confused. The cooks are confused too. I turn to him and ask, what was that? He says, in a smarmy voice, employees can't eat. Rather than remind him that he himself had eaten a few Oreos in just the same manner a few hours before, I stay silent because I know revenge is a dish best served cold. Fast forward several weeks. It's a Friday night and the place is very busy. Many of the regulars are at the bar chatting and having a good time. There's kind of an anteroom where the staff can hang out after work if we don't need the space. I clock out and see that two of my co-workers are having a beer there so I go over to join them. One of the regulars sees us and brings us a bowl of some homemade trail mix he made. It was a nice time, sitting with some friends after work, drinking beer, and eating some trail mix. Enter the manager, the assistant manager, and another waiter. He has to void something on a check and he needs a manager ID to okay it, normal stuff. They finish and as they're going for the door, I see the assistant manager side-eye the trail mix. I know what must be done. He stops and walks over to the table and grabs a handful of the trail mix. Immediately I bring my left hand up and forcefully slap his hand into the bowl. Nuts and raisins go flying everywhere. The two people I was with stop talking. Everyone looks at me and silence falls. In a clear, angry voice the assistant manager turns to me and asks, why did you do that? Without hesitation, I look him right in the eye and say, employees can't eat. After about five seconds of silence, he turns and walks away, and we resume socializing. The guy was hated almost universally at the place, I had a lot of fun retelling the story for the next few weeks. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share, and we will see you in the next video.